The speed of light in a vacuum is an absolute cosmic speed limit. Nothing can go faster than 3.0 times 108 meters per second. That's 300 million meters per second or 1 billion 80 million kilometers per hour. According to the laws of physics, as we approach light speed, we have to provide more and more energy to make an object move. In order to reach the speed of light, you need an infinite amount of energy and that's impossible. The speed of light traveling through a vacuum is exactly 299,792,458 meters per second or 983,571,056 feet per second. That's about 186,282 miles per second. A universal constant known in equations as C or light speed. According to Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity, on which much of modern physics is based, nothing in the universe can travel faster than light. The theory states that as matter approaches the speed of light, the matter's mass becomes infinite. That means the speed of light functions as a speed limit on the whole universe. But despite the speed of light's reputation as a universal constant, scientists and science fiction writers alike spend time contemplating faster than light travel. So far, no one's been able to demonstrate a real warp drive. But that hasn't slowed our collective hurdle toward new stories, new inventions, and new realms of physics. A light year is the distance that light can travel in one year. About 6 trillion miles, or 10 trillion kilometers. It's one way that astronomers and physicists measure immense distances across our universe. Light travels from the moon to our eyes in about one second, which means the moon is about one light second away. Sunlight takes about 8 minutes to reach our eyes, so the sun is about 8 light minutes away. Light from Alpha Centauri, which is the nearest star to our own, requires roughly 4.3 years to get here. So Alpha Centauri is 4.3 light years away. To obtain an idea of the size of a light year, take the circumference of the Earth, 24,900 miles, lay it out in a straight line, multiply the length of the line by 7.5. The corresponding distance is one light second. Then place 31.6 million similar lines end to end. NASA's Glenn Research Center says on its website, the resulting distance is almost 6 trillion miles. Stars and other objects beyond our solar system lie anywhere from a few light years to a few billion light years away. And everything astronomers see in the distant universe is literally history. When astronomers study objects that are far away, they are seeing light that shows the objects as they existed at the time that the light left them. As early as the 5th century, Greek philosophers like Empedocles and Aristotle disagreed on the nature of light speed. Empedocles proposed that light, whatever it was made of, must travel and therefore must have a rate of travel. Aristotle wrote a rebuttal of Empedocles' view in his own treatise, On Sense and Sensible, arguing that light, unlike sound and smell, must be instantaneous. Aristotle was wrong, of course, but it would take hundreds of years for anyone to prove it. In the mid-1600s, the Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei stood two people in hills less than a mile apart. Each person held a shielded lantern. One uncovered his lantern when the other person saw the flash. He uncovered his too. But Galileo's experimental distance wasn't far enough for his participant to record the speed of light. He could only conclude that light traveled at least 10 times faster than sound. In the 1670s, Danish astronomer Ole Romer tried to create a reliable timetable for sailors at sea. According to NASA, he accidentally came up with a new best estimate for the speed of light. To create an astronomical clock, he recorded the precise timing of eclipses of Jupiter's moon Io from Earth. Over time, 
Romer observed that Io's eclipses often differed from his calculations. He noticed that the eclipses appeared to lag the most when Jupiter and Earth were moving away from another, showed up ahead of time when the planets were approaching, and occurred on schedule when the planets were at their closest or farthest points. This observation demonstrated what we know today as the Doppler effect. The change in frequency of light or sound emitted by a moving object that in the astronomical world manifests as the so-called redshift. The shift toward rather longer wavelengths in objects speeding away from us. In a leap of intuition, Romer determined that light was taking measurable time to travel from Io to Earth. Romer used his observations to calculate the speed of light, since the size of the solar system and the Earth's orbit wasn't yet accurately known, as argued in a 1998 paper in the American Journal of Physics, he was a bit off. But at last, scientists had the number to work with. Romer's calculation put the speed of light at about 124 miles per second or 200,000 kilometers per second. In 1728, English physicist James Bradley based a new set of calculations on the change in the apparent position of stars caused by Earth's travels around the Sun. He estimated the speed of light at 185,000 miles per second or 301,000 kilometers per second, accurate to about 1% of the real value according to the American Physical Society. If Captain Kirk were constrained to move at the speed of our fastest rockets, it would take him a hundred thousand years just to get to the next star system, said Seth Shostak, an astronomer at the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence SETI Institute in Mountain View, California, in a 2010 interview with Space.com's sister site, Live Science. So, science fiction has long postulated a way to beat their speed of light barrier, so the story can move a little bit more quickly. Without faster than light travel, or propulsion technology similar to popular sci-fi movies like Star Trek or Star Wars for that matter, discovering distant worlds would be impossible. If humanity is ever to reach the farthest and constantly expanding corners of our universe, it will be up for our future physicists to boldly go where no one ever has gone before. Although the speed of light is often referred to as the universe's speed limit, the universe actually expands even faster. The universe expands at a little more than 42 miles or 68 kilometers per second for each megaparsec of distance from the observer, wrote astrophysicist Paul Sutter in a previous article for Space.com. Note that a megaparsec is 3.26 million light years, a really long way. In other words, a galaxy one megaparsec away appears to be traveling away from the Milky Way at a speed of 42 miles per second, or 68 kilometers per second, while a galaxy two megaparsec away recedes at nearly 86 miles per second, or 136 kilometers per second, and so on. At some point, at some obscene distance, the speed dips over the scales and exceeds the speed of light, all from the natural regular expansion of space, Sutter explained. It seems like it should be illegal, doesn't it? Special relativity provides an absolute speed limit within the universe, according to Sutter, but Einstein's 1915 theory regarding general relativity allows different behavior when the physics you're examining are no longer local. A galaxy on the far side of the universe? That's the domain of general relativity, and general relativity says, who cares? That galaxy can have any speed it wants, as long as it stays way far away, and not up next to your face, Sutter wrote. Special relativity doesn't care about the speed, superliminal or otherwise, of a distant galaxy, and neither should you. 